Jackson. Jakari Jackson reporting for InfoWars.com. Today we are in the city of Austin, Texas. We're on our way to see printable gun pioneer Cody Wilson. Now you guys may recall Cody, he made headlines many years ago for his production of The Liberator, the first 3D printed pistol. Since then his technology is advanced and he actually has a shop that we're going to see where he assembles what is known as the Ghost Gunner. It's a mill that allows you to make, among many other things, a lower receiver for an AR-15. So we're going to check out his shop and see what he thinks about the recent reasonable gun control proposals made by the president. Okay, so we're here with Cody Wilson and he's going to walk us through Defense Distributed and show us how he fabricates the Ghost Gunner. Cody? Hit your car. Yes. All right, you're in the shop, small shop. Let's come to the back. Assembly line model. As long as you're happy with the machine looking like this, okay, that's what it looks like. That's what we make. There's no variation. Everything's the same. It's the Model T of uh, personal assault weapon fabrication. We start with an uh, empty shell over here. Machine proceeds around the assembly line in a U. Comes back down through here. Makes a lot of uh, takes a lot of sub assemblies from the back, which are which are uh, inserted as it goes. Gets fitted out with electronics, power supply. We do a little bit of uh, setup code testing, comes off the line, goes out the back door to your house. So what exactly does the Ghost Gunner do? Uh, the Ghost Gunner is, in actuality, just a mill, just a very tiny computer-controlled mill. A uh, computer tells a moving end mill in space where to go, how to carve out a piece of aluminum that you can kind of bolt down to a work surface. It is previous century technology. There is nothing in it, of it, that it is itself revolutionary. But when you ask me what does a ghost gunner do, I don't really think about the milling. I think about what it does to the liberal imagination, what it does to the elitist gun control imaginary. It destroys it. That's what the ghost gunner really does. And now secretly, in garages in a neighborhood near you, someone may or may not be manufacturing an AR-15 in their garage. The ghost gunner has a price tag of $1,500 and sports a very long waiting list. Cody's machine has the ability to take a hunk of billet aluminum known as an 80% lower receiver and mill it into a principal part of an AR-15 rifle. But as one might expect, not all politicians are on board. This again is the engine to the high-powered and semi-automatic assault weapons that you see displayed here today. With that, the lower receiver, an individual can buy this $80 to $100 online. This doesn't have a serial number, and it doesn't require a background check. All the person has to do, go to someone who has a drill press. You are a self-proclaimed anarchist, correct? Yeah, look, I, I'm anti-state, man, all the way. Does your philosophy further your technology or your drive for technology? My technology furthers my philosophy. I'm not sure if the philosophy is furthering the technology that much. I mean, our, our insight is that change is tool-based and can be technically based. Uh, but I hope that I don't lapse into a certain kind of arrogant technicism. In 2016, President Obama made headlines by outlining plans for biometric GPS-tracked firearms. We need to develop new technologies that make guns safer. If we can set it up so you can't unlock your phone unless you got the right fingerprint, why can't we do the same thing for our guns? Uh, do you have any plans to make a fingerprint scanner for Ghost Gunner? Uh, not at all, Jakari. I want every Ghost Gunner to look like its brother. I want to take as, as little information uh, as legally necessary to manufacture, to ship. The, the capital stock of guns in this country will never be converted into these new guns, and they, we will never see a similar capital stock of these biometric-enabled guns. And there is no way of even demanding, under any statutory authority present, that same level of biometrics and whatever, smart technology in my machine. My machine is a milling tool. It's like saying, well, should your hammer have, you know, fingerprint technology? It's the same thing, no. Well, let me ask you, how long until a product that comes out of a ghost gunner is military-grade technology? Look, I'll answer the question that it's military-grade now. Commercial low receivers for AR-15s are machined aluminum, often billet aluminum. You're getting the exact same product off of the ghost gunner to military specification because we, we base our fixturing and our software around the military spec of the AR-15 lower. So you're getting functionally, materially identical components to the military component. 
Now, Cody, you went to UT. Did you study engineering? What did you study there? No, man, I, I studied law at UT. This is, uh, a lot of the guys in this shop don't come from engineering backgrounds per se, but we think that the computer revolution, the digital revolution, they impart certain abilities or the ability to educate yourself in a way that formal education uh, tricks you into thinking that you, you can't be educated. So everybody that came into this shop didn't necessarily have a hands-on machine type shop background, uh, but they've got it now. Before the Ghost Gunner, Cody first shot to fame with the production of The Liberator, a crude single-shot 3D printable gun. He used his skills and equipment to print things such as magazines as well. So consider this, a CAD file uh, containing the information for a 3D printable weapon system. If that file was seated by 30 people, let's say, um, as long as there's a free internet, that file is available to anyone at any time all over the world. Now, a gun can be anywhere. Any bullet is now a weapon. But Defense Distributed's goal isn't really personal armament. It's, it's more the liberation of information. It's about living in a world where you just download the file for the thing you want to make in this life. This machine did uh, all the principal Liberator components for the Liberator trials back in early 2013. Uh, it's an old 2003 Stratasys SST machine. I'm involved in a large lawsuit against the U.S. State Department that's now in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and that is fighting them over their, their total blanket ban on my posting of our work here, our research, and our R&D efforts to the internet. They've literally targeted no one else in history. Uh, you can go to the Air 15 forums, you can go to any kind of CAD repository you want. The gun files are all over the internet and have been for years. DOJ got back to Congress after uh, the Anti-Terrorism and Effective Death Penalty Act and said, oh look, sorry, people can post bomb plans to the internet, free speech. But somehow after Liberator, uh, the Obama administration was so embarrassed that they sicked the State Department on me and told me to prove it, how bad I wanted to do this kind of work. With this, you're printing the lower receivers, correct? But for a 1911, how, how fully functional would a 1911 be coming out of a machine like this? In the very same way that you're not producing the entire AR-15 on this machine, you're producing like the receiver. In the 1911, there's a frame component that can be milled out of aluminum, which is also sometimes considered to be the regulated component. So we're talking about creating the regulated components of guns as much as we're talking about being able to meaningfully manufacture them. So if I can make my own AR-15 receiver, I sidestep the entire FFL registration serialization network and I can assemble my own private AR-15. But I don't make every single component of that AR-15 on this machine. I want to read you this quote from Kalashnikov, of course, the maker of the AK-47. I didn't want to design a weapon that was going to be used in widespread fratricidal war. I only wanted to help protect my country's borders. Now the ghost gunner, the liberator, all this stuff is in its infancy. Let's say the technology advances and becomes more widespread. There are more than a few bodies attributed to the technology. Do you foresee a day when Cody Wilson will share a sentiment similar to Kalashnikov? I share Kalashnikov's sentiment now. Uh, the rest of his sentiment was that he, uh, he said, don't blame me for, for this technology and, the, and, its, and its use. Blame the politicians. Blame the nation states in these large protracted wars, right, which are the, really the consequence of the behavior between states as states. And I have nothing to do with that. And whenever these people get on TV and point the finger at the hobbyists, they fail to mention how many AR-15s they themselves are shipping to Mexico, to Al-Nusra, through Turkey, with CIA operations and, you know, all over these theaters of war in the Middle East. I have nothing to do with that now, or will I ever? Obama cries for first graders in Connecticut. Does he cry for the first graders in any other country to which he shipped these assault rifles himself? I didn't send them there. How'd they get there? Most of the InfoWars radio listening audience is aware of the high quality, affordable firearms available that are made right here in America at HDFirearms.com. One of the most exciting things about HDFirearms.com is the ability to upgrade your AR-15 platform today. They call it their low profile platform. PVX muzzle brakes, proven to help control muzzle rise. 6061 billet material with type 3 hard coating. Bolt carrier group for 308 and 556 ARs. 
Custom Kydex holsters. Ideal for concealed carry with .080 thick Kydex to ensure durability. Most competitors' material use .060. Configure yours today at hdfirearms.com. And my favorite, single stage trigger, a home run upgrade for your AR-15 and AR-10 platforms. Find out more at hdfirearms.com today or call 770-485-7015. That's hdfirearms.com or call 770-485-7015. 